Good afternoon, FlossTube. It's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome all of you to my channel today. I'm very glad that you stopped by to visit with me. This week, cross-stitch-wise, I have several things to share. I have a couple of finishes. I have progress on a couple of my current sales, and I have a couple of new starts. So let's get started. So last week, I cannot, I should have watched my prior video before starting this one. So um, I'm not sure if I've shared one of these finishes with you already. If I have, get to see it again. But I have, have two finishes to share. Um, I know that when I left you last week, I had intentions of focusing on Telling Emblem, um, Tangled Tidings, Merry Christmas. And I'm so excited to show you that finish. You may have already seen it if you follow me on Instagram. Um, I just really, really have enjoyed working on this piece. Love the pop of color. Love that. Uh, just this. I just love everything about it. I love the size of it. It's not very large. Uh, just the beauty. Everything about it. Christmas. The colors. Love it. Now I did sub uh, the piece itself. Called for a different color fabric. My piece is stitched on a 32 count sterling from Zweigert. So it is, is a little bit mottled blue, more like um, maybe an icicle iceberg, that, those kind of colors. But I really, really am in love with this piece. I do plan to, um, I thought I would get around to it this weekend, but my husband changed my plans. I thought I would do a little uh, Goodwill shopping, find the perfect frame. And I have an idea that I want to put it in, kind of frame it as close up as I can. It really depends on what frame I find. And I want it to be a very bright red, just like the cardinal frame. And I want to have it a bright, glossy red. So um, I'm sure I can find everything I need to do that. I just need to look. So very excited with this one. Hoping to have it framed to share with you again next week. But again, this is Tangled Tidings, Merry Christmas by Telling Emblem. And then I had another piece, and please forgive me, like I said, if I shared this last week, I didn't rewatch the video, so I'm not real sure, but I had a finish on Spring Quaker. I had very little to finish on this when I had picked it up last, which is why I'm not sure if I finished it last week or this one. And this is the finish on that piece. So I used the call for a thread, which was Blooming Crocus. This is on a 32 count Medusa's Gaze. I absolutely love that name. Uh, Medusa's Gaze, um, it's by Lappin Loops, and it's a 32 count as well. And I just enjoyed stitching these. This is the Second Quaker by Primrose, and I did a third Quaker this year um, of Heart and Hands Valentine Quaker this year. So there's another finish there. So I'm so excited. It feels so good to have those, those um, pieces finished up. It allowed me to bring some more into the fold. I usually try to keep two on the go. Um, this year so far, I'm keeping three, which is two focus pieces, a large, um, a larger and a small as well as a sow. I'm gonna, those two I'm not doubt, but I've brought in another sow which is, will be two, and I've made two starts. One of them is a class piece, which I'm gonna share with you next. This is Toes in the Sand. This is by Hands on Design. It is a class that's gonna be held at Barefoot Needle Arts June 11th. And I, had to, I needed to get started on this class piece. This week, I'm going to focus primarily on this one. I really want to get this one knocked out. It'll take some pressure off of me um, with things I'm obligated. I feel like I'm obligated to stitch. And I picked it up. And this is it so far. I've got it upside down. So, as you can see, I've gotten the umbrella and the cushions in the Adirondack chairs. So I still got a good bit of the stitching. I just have a small um, bit of it started, but I'm happy with that progress. I was hoping to get more progress, but I had taken Friday off because I'm in a use it or lose it status with my leave at work. And I'm trying to knock out because 
I'm not able to take big chunks of leave right now, but I'm taking them here and there where I have the staffing available that I'm able to take it. So I took this past Friday off. And so my husband took half of a day and we took off to um, the coast of South Carolina to Beaufort, one of our favorite places. And we came back today. I didn't get as much stitching. I didn't touch any stitching yesterday. I sat on the beach and I read a book and I'll show the book with you in a minute. But um, I'm hoping to focus, like I said, primarily on this piece the majority of this week with a few exceptions, a couple exceptions. One of them is going to be next weekend. Um, every weekend, if you've been following me this year, I work on the Bristol Squirrel Sampler. I, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Just kind of inhaled the wrong way there. But I have been stitching along on this Bristol Squirrel Sampler with my friend Christine. We started it together last year. Uh, we attended a retreat together in February and we decided uh, we were going to work on it and try to give it a lot of love this year. So my, is part of my, I would guess you would say my loose rotation. And this is where I am this week. When I left you last week, I had dropped down so that I'm just overlapping the bottom of page one here. So I wanted to have the complete left hand side of the, the page. And I have the complete right hand side up here. And it kind of gives me a gauge of how much more I have to go. So what I did to uh, this weekend is I finished up this, another of these repeating motifs that go across here. And so I have a second one completed. So that's what I worked on this week. I just pick it up. If I'm doing letters, I try to finish a letter. If I'm doing a motif, I try to finish a motif. I don't like to stop in the middle of a thread. So like if I finish a letter and I do part of a, another letter, and then that's where I end. Then I'm just a few stitches into next week's piece, but um, glad to have that done. I'm getting close to a page finish. So like I said, we started focusing on them in February. So February in six months will be August. So I'll have a page finished by August and I'm happy, happy with that. So hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be close to a second page finish, but we'll see how it goes. You'll see that one each week throughout the year, I'm sure. And then I'm starting another sow. I do not remember her hashtag, but I'm stitching along with my friend Kara for um, her birthday sow. Her birthday is in May. She's never stitched a mirror. A lot of people do mirror May, and I am pulling out an old start, an old whip to stitch along with Kara. And this is, um, let me find my glasses. I always lay them down before because I don't need them unless I'm stitching and I've laid them down somewhere. I'm just gonna show you the piece. It's an older pattern. I think it come from the set of one of the um, European mirror retreats and I have a small start on her. I started her in Mania of 2018. So it's just so fitting that I have a mirror. It's May, I started it in Mira May. I'm stitching along with Kira for her birthday, and she is Sea Dragon's Lair. She did a, was in one of the videos two or three back, which uh, my friend Kylie and I filmed a while at Barefoot Needle Arts. And let me show you my small start. I do not know the name of the fabric. It's been so long. And I wasted so much fabric. You can see, look at that. It's gonna be a relatively small piece, and I put it smack dab in the center of this. It's a very pale pink fabric. But I just love, I love Nora Corbett's ladies. I have a few finished that I've not uh, framed, but this is one of my favorite, and I think she's Garden Verses, I think. Don't quote me. And then I have Deepest Love. Right here is a mermaid. And I have Autumn Queen over here, and those are just the ones that I have framed for myself. Um, back in the day, I stitched one each for my daughters. So they each have a mirror of their own. And um, I've stitched one or two of the fairies. And I haven't stitched any, I don't believe, since I started 
floss tube. I'm not sure why. Like I said, I do love her ladies. I think it's more of um, just the big, beautiful dresses, how they are just her use of color and they dress in ways we no longer dress. You don't see dress like this unless you're watching the new Bridgerton theor um, series off of Netflix. You know, you don't, you don't see them unless you're watching old movies and I just think the dresses and the women are just beautiful. She does a great job designing. Okay, so I've showed you my two finishes. I've showed you um, my two sows, and I've showed you my one start with the um, class piece. And now I have another, and this is a piece I shared with you last video, I believe, and this is Hello Spring. It is by Teresa Cogut. I'm stitching in this one along with my friends Natasha, Mary, and April for Mary Mania. It's just a hashtag we, we use. We stitch together, we sell together, we do things together, and it's just a fun hashtag we coined several years ago when we were up to some mischief of stitching and stashing and that kind of thing. So I made a small start on this week, on it this past week. We all agreed to start it on May 1st. And I didn't get very far because it was a work day. We're all using the same fabric and it is 32 count. And again, I don't have my glasses and I'm not sure where I placed them. I'm thinking I left them downstairs, but let me let you, let me see. It's Moonstone even weave, 32 count. And I'm not, I can't see who it's by, but it's a beautiful, lightly modeled fabric. And there is my tiny little start. The piece is gonna be roughly around 13 inches wide, maybe 12 and a half, 12 and a half, 13 inches wide, square. So it's perfectly square. And again, let me show you the booklet. And it's in the Hello Spring book. That's not the name of the pattern. The pattern is called Cottage Bouquet. So it's in the Hello Spring book, but this is the name of the pattern. Sorry if I've confused anyone with that because I think I've done that a couple of times. So there's that one. And that's where I'm at. So going forward with this one, because I started it on Wednesday, I believe I'm gonna continue to work on it on Wednesdays after work if I have time. I'm not gonna put pressure on myself with this one because of course we're just stitching along at our own paces and because they love me and they're not putting pressure on me and <laughs> my stitch alone partners. Uh, I'm gonna just take my time and enjoy this stitch because as I said, I wanna really focus on this one and so when I sit down tonight, this is gonna be my piece. I'm not sure how I'm gonna work in Kira's. I do plan on to work out on it at least once a week. Haven't chosen a day. I think it's just gonna be where I can fit it in. Mondays are normally really late days for me. Um, I don't often get work, I mean, stitched stitches in on a Monday, but I'm hoping to get just a few because my husband has a sports league on when, uh, Mondays. And you know, when I come home, I do have a few moments just to myself before he comes in. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I wanted to share with you, so I, like I said, I did go to the beach and uh, this weekend, and I took along a new book. It came in Thursday, and of course we left Friday. And my husband and I have really been spring cleaning, so Jacob and Cheyenne moved out, and last weekend we spent a lot of time just cleaning, cleaning uh, things up, trashing things, donating things, and it really felt good because now that all of my children have flown the coop for the last time. Um, I There's a lot of things I just don't need. And I found myself um, just enjoying it just, just so much. So anyway, moving forward, I got rid of some things and then I wanted to purchase some organizing things. And when I was doing that on Amazon, it suggested this book and it's The Tide Between Us. It's by Olive Collins. And it's talking about um, history in the 16th and uh, 1600s and 1700s concerning um, 
Irish children that were sent to Jamaica um, to work not only for their um, their voyage over, but they had to basically uh, work for their plantation owners for a few years before they can work off their freedom. And it, and it follows the tale of a 10 year old boy. Um, and I'm about maybe a quarter of the way through it, but it really had gripped me yesterday and he's just adapting and the sea voyage and being in a very hot climate after uh, being brought up in Ireland and the loss of his parents and being taken away from everything he knew and loved. It just pulled at my heartstrings. And so I'm enjoying it right now. I'll let you know as it goes on how I like it. But so far, very good book. It had me, had my whole attention there at the beach when it wasn't, uh, my, my attention wasn't pulled towards the pelicans and the children laughing and just, just a good relaxing day. It was around 78, 80 degrees. The wind was blowing. We were, we bought a new, the beach, that's the beach we frequent often. It's Hunting Island and it's a state park and it's very windy. The past two or three times we've went, the wind just an umbrella just does no good because it turns it inside out. It's It broke it the, the last time we visited last year. And we bought a new thing called a shibumi. And it's more or less a huge flag. Seems to be made out of like parachute type material. And you have a, um, a linked pole that you link together. And it is flexible. And you slide the flag on and you just bend the cord into a upside down U. And there's also the bag that your, um, your pole and your, I'm gonna call it a flag, the flag portion is shipped to you in, the bag that you carry it to the beach is another cord. And the cording goes from the top of the U to the ground and you fill it with beach sand. So it's very lightweight very easy and I don't know who come up with this idea but it's catching on and I'm seeing more and more of them at the beach very easy assembly it took us maybe 10 minutes we were covered um, we got the large size so when my children come with my grandchildren we can all be out of the sun so I'm that was our maiden use of it first time we've used it and we really really enjoyed it so um, Anyway, we're hoping to have another trip in the next couple of weeks. We love visiting the beach, the relaxation. We're really close to the beaches here, um, just a couple hours drive. And I just, I enjoy it this time of year. We'll go for the day, pack a cooler, stay the m most of the day and come home and just being in the heat and the wind and the sun and you just kind of get drained, but it's so relaxing, just so relaxing. So there's that. And then... Um, back to cross stitch last week I had a giveaway I mentioned some of the p previous giveaway owners I reached out to all of you to see if you knew any of them that had not already uh, contacted me with their information so I could get their winnings to them everyone commented to me and a lot of you were reaching out to me letting me know that you had uh, notified the person. So what you did worked and thank you. I couldn't have done it without you because they weren't responding. Everyone has responded save one person and I did not bring my notebook up here, but I will probably mention that person's name ne again next weekend. But I had one person with one pattern um, that didn't comment, but that's great because I had like seven. So now I have one. And then I want to give away this week's. Now I've already contacted the person and it is Debbie Miller 7572. She won the copy of Tulip Cottage. So I've already left a message on your comment from last week, Debbie. Um, congratulations, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, um, for this piece, I had asked everyone to tell me what your favorite berry was. I got lots of answers, um, some that were not as frequent was gooseberries. Um, my favorite happens to be raspberries. There are several of you that enjoy that fruit. The big one was strawberries, I think followed by raspberries and then blueberries. Um, one or two said blackberries, which have to be my second favorite. I love those as well. And we have a big blackberry thicket right at the end of our road that 
is flowering now, so it's not gonna be long, and I'm looking forward to picking those wild blackberries. So again, Debbie Miller 7572, you've won this copy. Just reach out to me. My email address is in the drop down menu up above, uh, right below this video and above your comment. Um, and let me know so I can get this out to you this week. And I wanna thank you. So for this week, I do have a few more. And this is a relatively new design by her. This, this is again from October House. Um, this is Gingerbread Row, and this week, again, I have three. So you have three people have a chance to win this pattern this week. And it is a Christmas design, but it is so very cute. And I am going to link October House's Instagram down below. So you can take a look. I'm sure she's posted pictures of this one there, and you can go take a look at it. So they're all the same. And I'm not sure what to ask. Um, let's ask about the beach. So what do you take with you? What is something that you take with you to do when you go to the beach? Do you take your, take your stitching? Do you take a book? Do you take a game? What are the things that you could take along for a beach day? And do you take beach days? Do you live close to the beach? Do you often go? So again, just leave a comment below. Please do not say that there's a giveaway. I had one person do that last week, so it's immediately gonna disqualify you if I see that you're saying there's a giveaway and I'm gonna delete it because it atta um, attracts trolls. Uh, we don't wanna do that. And then I want you to at least be 18 or older so that I can have your address. And again, just like you heard me say with Debbie, you're gonna leave, uh, send me, if you win, I will announce them next week on my video. I will also uh, try to leave a comment on your comment if I can find it, depending on how many we have. I'll leave a comment on your comment letting you know that you've won so you can get in touch with me with that mailing address. But I have three for this coming week. And so for this week, again, I'm gonna continue to work on my Toes in the Sand, my class piece, hoping to knock that one out. I will work again on my red sampler next weekend. On Wednesday, I will try to put a few stitches in my sow with my dear friends, Amy, I'm Amy, April, Mary, and Natasha. And um, I wanna put a stitch or two in for Kira and just um, to celebrate her for her birthday. So everyone have a wonderful week. I hope you enjoy your springtime, whether it's the beach, whether it's your yard, in your garden, whether it's just time with your family. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and until next time, hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.